how long did you live in here before you brought Chris in to do the pond? Oh, we brought, we got the pond started before we moved in. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pondaholic right that there. That's my priority. What's the story with the tadpoles? I, I posted on my Facebook that I would pay $2 a toad to people's kids who wanted to bring me toads and I, I got a lot of toads. <laughs> <laughs> that is and I one. Got tadpoles. So yeah, now you got tadpoles. Hi, I'm Greg Whitstock the Pond Guy. This is my channel, Greg Whitstock the Pond Guy, and we're in Waukee. Yep. This is Will, his top lieutenant, and this is Chris from Just Add Water, and we have a pond that you. How long did you build this? September of 2018, so last year. Okay, last year, and it's a very special lady with a very special story. I'm looking forward to meeting her. Stick around and see her beautiful aquascape ecosystem pond and hear her story. <music> <laughs> okay. Now this is really funny because this area I was told is being set up for your grandkids that come, what is it called? Camp what? Oma. Oma boot camp. Oma boot camp. You know what? I wish I had an Oma boot camp. This is a beautiful backyard. Heidi, I'm the pond guy for Hi, Greg. Nice to meet you. Yay! At your old house, you had a pond that you had built yourself. Is that yeah. the story? So tell me well, the story. we inherited it. There uh -huh. was a pond there, and the lady that lived there before us, she chlorinated it because she didn't like any of the Natural. toads and frogs, mm -hmm. and she just wanted clean, pretty water coming through. And I couldn't wait to get the chlorine out of there and put living things. And uh, we were having trouble with the water and the filtration, and so I just found Just Add Water online. Yes. They came out and gave me some ideas, and the only way I'm gonna get the water that I want is to put a wetland filtration in. Mm -hmm. It's the Aquascape ecosystem, they didn't have it set up. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and then um, when they told me how much that would be to add that to the pond, <laughs> my husband was like, no, no, no. Okay, that's interesting, because but... I'm looking at this pond right now, so <laughs> you must have been married a little bit longer because this is not an inexpensive investment. Right, and so what happened is we lived on acreage, we had a much bigger house. He was wanting to downsize and be closer to work. And um, so yeah, I found a yard, knowing that we were downsizing, we would have a little bit of money. So I found a yard that was just all flat ground and it was perfect for a pond. And so literally you bought the house based off of the land for the pond. Right. And you, this is just a pond that you inherited. Right. Wow, so you enjoyed the hobby that much. I enjoyed it, but I was very frustrated. My water printers were all over the place. I have a biology background. So oh, that's when, right, you were a school teacher, right? Right, and so when I heard and was explained how the wetland mm -hmm. filtration would work, it all made complete sense to me. So I just talked to my husband about it, and I said, you know, if we're going to do it right, I think I had to let him do enough <laughs> awful pond work. So okay, that, that, that was and a... then promise him that it would be maintenance free. Uh huh. And so, yeah, I mean, what I have to do. So we got a wetland here. So yes. we yeah. have a wetland yeah. here, and I love flower gardening, so I'm having a great time with it. I'm from Alaska. I had no idea there were forget me nots mm -hmm. in the wetland, or they were available. And so that's Alaska State Flower. So I was pretty excited about the forget me nots, and they're going crazy. In fact, I'll know next year not to put them so close together, but um, I just cannot believe that this pond sits mostly in the sun. I don't have any trouble with algae. I don't have any trouble with high nitrite levels. My pH is pretty solid. If it rains, I just adjust it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's really all I have to do. This is a maintenance-free pond. And that's how you set it up, right, Chris? Absolutely, yeah. So you basically, for how long did you maintain the old pond? How long did you... We met her in the spring, yeah. and then we did the project in September, so... Okay, so you really sold your old house pretty soon after you met yep. Chris. Yeah. And then how long how long did you live in here before you brought Chris in to do the pond? Oh, we brought, we got the pond started before we moved in. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, that's a pondaholic right that there. Was my, that was my priority. So, yeah, and then we started moving in. So as soon as we closed on the house, they started construction and I started planting in the fall because I like gardening and everything here is brand new. Yes. So in a few years it's going to be much Oh nicer. my gosh. Okay, but, can I come back? Mm -hmm. 
I want to come back because you're a cool lady. So Chris, kind of explain what you did. Oh, I will. Why don't you explain what you did here? Because really? you, you know you right. built this. Yeah. Heidi came on one of our tours and where we saw she saw Chris's pond. So Chris's pond has the bridge and the wetlands set up just like this, and Heidi loved it. Mm -hmm. She actually wanted me to take the exact waterfall rock out of Chris's. Pond. <laughs> I didn't hear about that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that rock. <laughs> that is awesome. So. We replicated that look with this bridge and that wetland, mm -hmm. and then we have a 30 by 18. Is that what it ended up being? I don't remember. It's a pretty big it size is. pot. It's substantial, yes? We've got, we're about three and a half feet, four feet deep at the very bottom. We've got that nice swim through cave down in there. We actually have two pumps, one for the wetland and then one for the stream back here. So we've got our aquascape skimmer, and then we also have a snorkel, so we're pulling water off the bottom. Nice. Because we're at that depth. So we designed this stream back here to hit all of the windows across the back of the house and the patio and then the lower seating area where we're at here. So what would an investment like this be? Because this is not a cheap investment. So what would a project like this from Just Add Water be? For a pond like this, wetland, the decorative waterfall, 30 by 18 or three and a half, four feet deep, we're like 35 to 40,000. Uh, how many thousand pounds of rocks did you put in here? <laughs> a lot of rock. I would say about 40,000 pounds of so boulders four, and then probably another 10, 15,000 pounds of gravel. So 40,000 pounds of rock, all the labor, and I gotta tell you, what do people say that come into your backyard? They're just amazed. And we just moved here in October. Um, pond was finished then and I had to wait for the spring to put new plants in. We had that terrible, terrible winter. But I've had all my neighbors have come back here and they just, it's like jaw drop. The, because they're used to seeing in people's backyard grass, you got rid of the grass and put in a pond. Right, we have a little grass around. We put a sidewalk in, which is really nice. That was to kind of encourage, well, to break off the barrier between where the mulch in the garden is and the grass. And it also encourages people to kind of stay on the path. Yep, except that you got your grandkids coming I to know. Camp Oma. I know. And uh, okay, this is a pretty funny story. What's the story with the tadpoles? Okay, so like I said, this pond was finished in October and in the springtime there's a little lake down the street I mean literally just a couple blocks away and I could hear the toads there uh -huh. and I knew the girls would be coming and their favorite thing to do is to get in yeah play around have the fish swim around their legs and they have nets and buckets and they catch and release tadpoles and I told them I said you know it's new we might not get tadpoles this year and they were a little bit disappointed and so I I posted on my Facebook that I would pay $2 a toad to people's kids who wanted to bring me toads, and I, I got a lot of toads. <laughs> <laughs> that is and I one. Got tadpoles. So yeah, now nah, you girls got tadpoles. Next week they can they can play with the tadpoles. Oh, that is one cool Oma. is the wetland uh -huh. because I like flower gardens. And yes, I don't and this is to... the rock that you wanted him to replicate, right? Well, yeah, it's not exact, but it's pretty good. <laughs> I got to pick it. I was very, very involved in- That's uh, a great rock. It's got it two little things. Rock. I mean, Will, you did a good job. I know, <laughs> you did a great job. But yeah, when I saw it, I was like, yeah, that rock. But anyway, uh -huh. it's so fun for me to flower garden and the fish fertilize the plants mm -hmm. and the pond waters them and I don't have to do anything. And then when they told me that I could put impatience in there because they like water, I thought, ferns yep. like water. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's one of the tricks. And impatient, they like kind of shade, but they can just go right into the gravel and by the end of the summer, this thing will be just gigantic. Yeah, and then I, so I got a fern. Uh-huh. Why not? Fern. I have the root bulb with the soil and I have it just half in mm -hmm. and it's really happy there. All of this I've planted this spring. This is your therapy garden too. This is my therapy garden. Mm -hmm. So you have a smaller home, a smaller yard, but you've got a huge impact with a water feature right, right. in your last one. And you don't have the maintenance that your last one had. That's the greatest part. I can just enjoy it. Just listen to the difference back here. It's quiet. There's so much life up there where we were just sitting, but back here you can't hear that sound nearly as much. I know. During the construction, I wanted to put a beach in. We have a couple of grandkids and we'll have more grandkids. So Will worked with me on finding the flat rock. Like I said, I was really involved. Mm -hmm. And so this one, we hand chose a rock they can sit on and put their feet in the water. So you already had the anticipation that the grandkids from Colorado would be visiting oh. and you wanted a rock for them to sit on. Of course, this plant is for me and them. In uh -huh. fact, the older 
one. When I found out how long koi fish live, uh -huh. I called my daughter and I said, oh my goodness, they're going to be alive when I'm not alive. She said, mom, I don't want your fish. <laughs> Emma, the oldest granddaughter, she said, I want them. And I said, how about if I leave in my will enough money for a pond to be built and my fish to be moved? Oh my and gosh, that's lived. someone. Yes, yes, yes. That is someone that loves their fish. Yeah, so my granddaughter is gonna, should probably keep this going. But here's some more flat rocks. So they can just step down oh. and go down to the next level. And interact with it. That's why we call them recreation ponds. You can actually, just like Chris is doing over there, sitting on, yeah. just like he does at home. That's a great spot. Yeah, you gotta sit on that. It's a great spot. So I have, oh, often the fish are over here because they love that, what's that jet thing called? The yep, so you have a pond head. power head. They, they, they love the current. Yeah. Cause koi are river fish, they're right. carp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they play in there. And then, so I put a feeding ring normally over there and they have to use the whole pond. Otherwise they'd be here the whole time. They really, really like that. And I gotta tell you, I love that this is cantilevered a little bit over. Cause when we're up there, when you're sitting inside, you can't tell how far it goes underneath it. Yeah. That that was another vision that I had. I wanted to be able to just look down right into the water. So they did such a good job of getting everything that I wanted. But I still had no idea how much maintenance would be required on my part. Uh -huh. And I am still really surprised. Every single day I come out here and I'm like, I'm standing on this rock and it's not even slimy. Well, because you started right with an oh. ecosystem water feature. Right. And your last pond was smaller and way more work. It was awful. Mm -hmm. It was just like every week there was a big problem. And I test my water every week and and then I test it usually after it rains. It tends to be Because you're that's that's the science teacher in you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that it's not too acidic. And um yeah, I just I'm in awe. Really, I'm in awe. I've had this pond. This is my first summer with it. And I just I'm just so grateful <laughs> for the research that's been done and for the equipment that's been installed to make it so that at my age it's easier and I don't have to have my husband complaining that we're working on the pond. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you for living the lifestyle and I'm, I got to give you a hug okay. for everything. So now that your husband has this pond, yeah. what were you saying? Well, he has, at work, he's got a screensaver, the pond and the fish on his computer, and people ask him about it, and now he loves to talk about the pond because he doesn't have to do any work. <laughs> so now he digs it. Right. So Heidi, can you tell me a little bit about this organization as, as well as your son? I have a son and a daughter. My son was killed in Afghanistan. When he was killed, my daughter did not know what to do with herself. And I'd already moved to Iowa, so she was in Colorado on her own. Um, she has a good dad, and he was there and has been there for her. And she she kind of just poured her grief into this organization called Flights for Fallen Families. Okay. So what happened is when Jake was killed, we were rushed to Dover Air Force Base. All the casualties come into Dover now, and they have this house that was donated to them called the Fisher House. And our family went and stayed in that house, all of us together, waiting for him to come in. And the government pays for spouses and parents to go. There's a ceremony, a ram ceremony. It's really beautiful. It's the first time it really becomes real that they're gone, is during that ceremony. Because that's when you see the box, the flag draped box, and you know they're in there. But everybody in the family wanted to go, and we did. Of course. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to pay for last minute flights. And so she decided that she would start fundraising, and by the end of the first year, and he died at the end of May, so she had half a year. She raised $18,000, and she's helped families um, go to Dover Air Force Base. She's helped families that have relatives that can't afford to come for funeral or any other kind of ceremony. So it's for the families of the fallen. And she's um, just put her heart into that. And it's, Amen. It's and that's been therapeutic for her. Very and therapeutic. she's been able to help other people that are in a similar situation to her. Right, right. Now, you should be a proud mom and thank you for your son's service. I am proud of him, thank you. And if people want to know more about the organization, where would they go? Flightsforfallenfamilies.org. And there's also a Facebook page, Flights for Fallen Families. Amen. This is 
for me? Okay, here. Aww. So there's this sweet couple that live here in Iowa and they're not Gold Star family members. They just love the military and love Gold Star family members and they make these. Here I'll be go. honored if you put that on. Yep. There you go. Jacob is thank with you. you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. So true. Home of the free because of the brave. I got to tell you, this is a challenging story, but I love the fact that she's got an Aquascape ecosystem pond that can bring happiness to her. The fact that her daughter created an organization to represent her brother, flightsforfallenfamilies.org. We're going to make a donation for that. And if you like this stuff and you get inspired too, might be by their people's stories and the incredible things that they've overcome, then make a donation as well. And uh, just love life because every day, every day above grade is a gift. And this woman has an incredible positive attitude. The fact that she's gone through every parent's nightmare and the fact that she has an Aquascape ecosystem some pond to be able to relax by warms my heart. I really, really do love my job. Cool lady. She actually found you through the certified oxygen conductor locator lead, right? Correct. Right. And isn't it amazing? You said you've only known her for a year, but it's like your old friends. Yeah. yeah. A, a pond customer is different than any other time of a customer. Talk about that, Chris. It's just the uh, the relationship. I mean, she was struggling with that pond and she just got to realize that we could solve her problem. So like, I mean, just her moving here and then buying the house set up for the pond that she wanted and just the stuff she says. And I just always tell her like, Heidi, you deserve the pond that you have now. I just know how much it uh, brings to her life. Like the pond tour, they were just sitting there, just talking to everyone, trying to sell work for us. Nice. Um, and talking about their son. Yeah. Which they should be. Yep. What a special thing. Good job, guys.